ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಆಯು ಚಿಂತನ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೋ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆಯುರ್ವೇದ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಮಾರ್ಚ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ದ ಕೋಲೋರೆಕ್ಟಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸರ್ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಮಂತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋಲೋರೆಕ್ಟಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಆಯುರ್ವೇದ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡೆಲ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋಲೋರೆಕ್ಟಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸರ್ ಅಸೆಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿ ಆಯುರ್ವೇದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ the potential risk factors some detailing about the research where they speak of non dietary origin and yet ayurveda gives the importance to the dietary origin of cancer and cancer like diseases these are some of the things that we had discussed in the previous episodes of all these we had discovered a very important point that samana vayu and apana vayu has a very major role in pathology of the colorectal cancer while discussing these things we had come across a shloka from charaka sutra 28th chapter saying that ahara sambhavam vastu rogascha ahara sambhavah we understood clearly that there is a potential risk factor that originates from the diet the food that we take is what we become so the food that which is wrongly taken is also what we become so the dietary origin of the colorectal cancer was clearly understood there came two concepts hita ahita sukha dukha sahatva asahatva these were the three pairs of concepts what were they speaking of hita and ahita those which are favorable to the body and those which are harmful to the body that can bring the healthy state to the body that can induce disease in the body that which can be taken like uh, without b- taking the stress which which can be taken in the homeostasis point of view that is sahatva and that builds up stress in the body is asahatva that is unbearable to the body so these were the three concepts that were discovered in the previous episode so clearly we understand sharira is not just influenced by ahara but also the majority point is spoken from the lifestyle point of view where the dietary origin has already been explained now we shall explain about the lifestyle factors that is the non dietary origin of the colorectal cancer when vihara is subjected into the three previous concepts of hita vihara ahita vihara sukha vihara dukha vihara the sahatva of the vihara and asahatva stage of the vihara we conclude coming into the concept of stress there is eu stress distress and chronic stress there can also be external environmental stress internal physiological stress physical stress and mental stress do you all agree with me for these points yes what is stress then stress is defined as a state of worry or mental tension caused by a difficult situation this is the definition given by who stress is a natural human response that prompts us to address challenges and threats in our lives right so what can these stress bring to our body to our mind to our health in general as we spoke of hita and ahita ahara there is also hita and ahita vihara nityam hita ahara vihara sevi samikshakari vishayeshu asaktah data samah satya parah kshamavan aptopa sevi cha bhavati aroga stress affects both the mind and the body a little bit of stress is good and can help us perform the daily activities too much stress can cause physical and mental health problems this is clearly what the ayurveda shloka is speaking of there should be hita ahara and vihara sevana every day the healthy practices should be on a regular basis 
today i practice a healthy diet and tomorrow i practice an unhealthy diet it will not give me a result of health right there should be a continuous diligent practices diligent priorities that are made and apart from this the definition of stress speaks about the mental stress the mental diseases that can happen this is what ayurveda also speaking of what ayurveda tells us is samikshakari vishayeshu asaktah these are the points which are giving us a hint about the mental health importance right then can stress cause colon cancer because this is the point of importance to us stress can speed up the spread of cancer throughout the body especially in the ovarian breast and the colorectal cancer this is a point which is taken from a website by name city of hope dot organization so this made a research on the topic is there a connection between the chronic stress and cancer yes absolutely right you are hearing me right that chronic stress can build up cancer and especially it can speed up the colorectal cancer why when the body becomes stressed neurotransmitters like norepinephrine are released which stimulate the cancer cells this is the basis of the stress which can speed up the cancer stress makes it hard for us to relax and can come with a range of emotions including the anxiety and irritability when stressed we may find it very difficult to concentrate we may experience headaches or other body pains and upset stomach or trouble sleeping and colorectal cancer the primary of the symptoms of the cancer is having a stomach upset am i not right about this i am absolutely right in saying this why because we have already understood that samana vayu and apana vayu are very important in the progression or for the prevention of colorectal cancer and the stomach upset is it not related to the samana vayu it is targeting oxidative stress in the disease promise and limitations of antioxidant therapy this is one research article from nature portfolio scientific reports articled by henry j forman and hong kyo zhang saying about the oxidative stress is a component of many diseases including cancer here we review the relationships between the oxidative stress redox signaling and disease the mechanisms through which the oxidative stress can contribute to the pathology how antioxidant defenses work what limits their effectiveness and how antioxidant defenses can be increased through physiological signaling dietary components and potential pharmaceutical intervention any person any vaidya or uh, who has read who has studied ayurveda diligently can certainly make a note of it why all these are research articles which are just verifying the fact validating the fact that nityam hita ahara vihara sevi can never go into the stress point they are already preventing the building up of stress in the body by because they always have a healthy practice and stress is always a result of unhealthy practices unbearful practices and which are not needed to the body the harmful practices that are done can bring unbearable results to the body and mind one more because i was curious about the stress resulting in cancer i asked i popped up a question on google asking can less sleep increase the oxidative stress i was very much right about it it has been hypothesized that sleep deprivation represents an oxidative challenge for the brain and that sleep may have a protective role against oxidative damage so here we found out that the stress is caused because of sleep deprivation and sleep if if somebody practices a healthy a healthy sleep routine can actually have a protective action and diminish the harmful effects of oxidative damage 
Sleep quality as an index to the potential risk of colorectal cancer. One more research paper from nature.com the scientific reports. Saying sleep quality has been marked as a potentially modifiable risk factor for chronic disease incidence and mortality. And cancer is it not a chronic disease? And when we know that sleep can be a potential modifiable risk factor. See viewers, uh, there are many modifiable risk factor as well as non-modifiable risk factors. And here we are discovering that sleep quality, the sleep is a modifiable risk factor. So why not take proper actions towards it? To the best of our knowledge, the present study is the first to investigate the association between a comprehensive sleep pattern made up of five components and the risk of CRC events, that is colorectal cancer events. This is the first, they are saying that this research is first of its kind of an investigation. But Ayurveda has spoken about it very long, very long to come, that we even can't have a dating back sometimes. What is Ayurveda speaking of then? In Ashtanga Sangraha, while understanding the Samana Vayu, it speaks Karoti Akala Shayana Jagara Dyaischa Dushitaha. It is saying that Akala Shayana, not sleeping at Ratri Kala, not sleeping at the night, imbalance in sleep wake cycle, sleeping in daytime, sleeping just after taking food, sleeping for long hours than needed, are all potential risk factors for disease. What risk factors? Mind it. They have spoken of this etiology only under the heading of Samanavayu. This is not have been mentioned directly under Apanavayu, neither directly in case of Pranavayu or Vyanavayu or Udanavayu. But indirectly, of course, it affects every other Vayu in the body. But directly, the sleep-wake cycle can affect Samanavayu. And colorectal cancer being one of the uh, statistically viewing it is one of the incidental diseases of this type incidental cancer of this time which is certainly related to samana vayu and one more is jagarana being completely awake at night so is it not speaking about the sleep quality as an index to the potential risk of colorectal cancers similarly the higher the healthy lifestyle score was, lower the participants' risk of CRC events. Besides, their data analysis also confirmed that combined scores of healthy sleep pattern and lifestyle contribute to reducing the CRC risk. Then, what is this healthy pattern, the sleep quality as an index, right? Three groups are made. Healthy sleep score and sleep pattern. Speaking of unfavorable sleep pattern of a score 0 to 1, medium sleep pattern of the score 2 to 3, favorable sleep pattern of the score 4 to 5. And one more division is about the healthy lifestyle practices. Right? This also has a three group marking where unfavorable lifestyle takes a score of 0 to 1, medium lifestyle has a score of 2 to 3 and favorable lifestyle has a score of 4 to 5. Revalidating the concepts on Nidra as a causative factor explained in Ashtanga Sangraha through the modern day research in relation to the incidence of colorectal cancer. There comes one more research article. Sleep pattern Healthy Lifestyle and Colorectal Cancer Incidence, which is articled by Ji Chen, Nan Quin Chen, Ta Hong, and many others, many other colleagues. Research have identified an association between the lifestyle factors and the colorectal cancer risk. So many uh, individuals were taken as volunteers and they were sampled from the UK Biobank. Chronotype sleep duration, insomnia, snoring, and excessive daytime sleepiness were combined to measure a healthy sleep score. Is it not what Ayurveda is speaking about? Then, is it not valid the points which are made by Ashtanga Sangraha with respect to Samana Vayu and with respect to colorectal cancer? 
sleep pattern and lifestyle are significantly correlated with CRC risk level. The healthier the subject's lifestyle and sleep pattern, lower is their CRC risk. One more graph which caught my attention was sleep duration and the colorectal cancer pattern, sleep duration and the gastric cancer pattern. So that validates the irregular sleep-wake cycle as a causative factor as explained in Ashtanga Sagra. Ayurveda had identified this long back. Just, we need to analyze more. One more understanding is from Apanavayu perspective as explained in Ashtanga Sagra. Apano Ruksha Gurvanna, speaking of the dietary origin and further it speaks of the non-dietary origin. Vega ghata vahanaihi, Vega ghata ati vahanaihi, Yana yana sanasthana chankra maihi cha ati sevitaihi. So it speaks about Vega ghata ati vahana ati yana ati asana ati sthana ati chankramana and aghata. What are they? So suppressing the natural urges, traveling excessively, excessive sitting, Adapting the same posture for a very longer duration, excess walking, walking for long hours or distance, and accidents. These can interrupt the physiology of Apanavayu and coincidentally cause a potential risk for uh, the diseases which are related to Apanavayu and colorectal cancer being one among them. Roga ha sarve api jayante vego dirana dharanaihi. Initiating the urges at the wrong time, suppressing the natural urges when they are already being evoked, serve as the primary cause for diseases. So, if we are initiating the urge at the wrong time and suppressing the natural urges, are we not creating stress on our own? Are we not creating the stress to the body voluntarily? Of course, there are many involuntary things that can build up stress. But at least we have to prevent those voluntary habits that can result in stress. Am I not right? Stressful situations can also cause or exacerbate the mental health conditions. Most commonly, the anxiety, depression, which require access to the health care. When we suffer from a mental health condition, it may be because our symptoms of stress have become persistent and have started affecting our daily functioning, including at work or school. So, while I was thinking about this, Mayo Clinic, one of the prestigious institutions, spoke common effects of stress on our body, being headache, muscle tension or pain, chest pain, fatigue, changes in the sex drive, stomach upset, sleep problems, on our mood as anxiety, restlessness, lack of motivation or focus, feeling overwhelmed, irritability or anger, on our behavior as overeating, undereating, angry outbursts, drug or alcohol misuse, tobacco use, social withdrawal, exercising less often, are all these are different modifications of the presentation of stress and what is one line or a one word answer to prevent ourselves from getting into this state or if you are already in the stress state how can we overcome so the one word answer we got was sleep right this is what the research said about and this is what ayurveda exactly is speaking ayurveda Speaks of Trayopastambha, of which Nidra is the second one. So, for a healthy life, healthy state of a person, three things are very essential: Ahara, the dietary habits; Nidra, the uh, the sleep pattern; and Brahmacharya. Anything apart from uh, anything, anything in the sense the healthy practice of the mind, the tactful thoughts, the relatively calmness in our uh, thinking pattern, in our decision pattern and that which is related to our healthy sexual practices as well. 
these three form the basis of life. And what are the benefits of sleep? As a modern day society, we speak of the healthy benefits of sleep as having improved mood, healthy heart, regulated blood sugar, improved mental function, restored immune system, the stress relief, athletic performance, maintaining the healthy weight, all these as benefits of sleep. Ayurveda speaks the same, rather in a more profound way. Why not we understand the healthy benefits of Nidra from Ayurveda then? It is not only the research article from the modern day times is speaking of this. If we think these research articles are just one day before or one month before or have a history of 10 years or might be 100 years, not more than that. But Ayurveda is not such. Stress induces the colorectal cancer while proper sleep-wake cycle definitely reduces the risk. This is what Ayurveda principles are saying. Nidrayattam sukham dukham pushtik karshyam balabalam prushata klibata gnanam agnanam jivitannacha saaiva yuktya punar yungte nidra deham sukhaj So nidra is the factor which is the deciding or the controlling factor for the sukha or dukha pushti or karsha bala or abala Brushata or Klebata, Nana or Agnana. That means to say, if somebody is healthy, if somebody is happy or in a sad state, this is controlled by Nidra. If somebody is of a moderate build or a very low build or very obese, this is also, or, a, or in a nutritive state, this is also controlled by Nidra. Somebody has the strength, somebody doesn't have strength. This is decided by Nidra. Somebody is sexually very potent and somebody is infertile. This is result of a sleep-wake cycle pattern. Somebody has, can concentrate and somebody else cannot concentrate. They cannot focus. They cannot uh, concentrate. These are all also decided by Nidra. This is what WHO was speaking about, right? When stressed, we may find it difficult to concentrate. Is it not related to Nidra then? Yes, absolutely. So, our life is the sum total of all the decisions we make every day and those decisions are determined by our priorities. Let us make good priorities. Those priorities which can help, which can help us in being in the healthy state or if we are prone to diseases, let us prevent ourselves from making conscious choices, let always health be our priority. For more content, follow Ayuchantana. Let's grow learning Ayurveda together.